So now I'm going to talk about economic welfare, which gives dollar value for well-being in a marketplace. Usually this well-being goes to consumers or producers. Sometimes it goes to nobody at all. Sometimes this well-being can be transferred from one group to another. And it shows the differences in well-being depending on whether free market forces operate or whether there's some sort of a distortion. So I'm going to use these examples here. This is a graphical depiction of these equations. QD is 6 minus P. This has an intercept of 6 and a slope of negative 1. When quantity is 0, price is 6. And when price is 0, quantity is 6. Quantity supplied has a slope of positive 1 and, and an intercept of 0. So they're fairly simple curves. Now, this point here can be shown algebraically if you have 6 minus P equals P because QD equals QS at this point. You can find out that P equals $3 because 6 equals 2P. And then if you put these equations in here, you can see that quantity is also 3. So P star is $3 and Q star is also $3. Now what we're also going to do is introduce a price of 1, which is a price ceiling. And with that, we can figure out what would happen if a price of 1 were to affect supply and demand and how big the shortage would be. So what you can do is you can actually say, well, if price is 1, quantity must be 1, quantity supplied. Quantity demanded would be 5 and the shortage would be 5 minus 1 or 4. So you can put dollar values on that. So you can find any value you want if you know either price or quantity. You put the number you know into this equation and you can actually get the other number. So that's how you can use algebra, but this graph simply matches these equations. So first of all, I'm going to talk about welfare in terms of consumer surplus and producer surplus. Producer surplus is a little bit easier because it goes along with the idea of profit. Producer surplus is profit or revenue minus cost. And so this is a measure of uh, basically what a business operates and, and earns. And so if you have a price of $3, I'm going to fill this in too, quantity is 3. If you have a price of $3, this is a rising cost curve. And so, for example, this company has zero cost. And so $3 minus zero is $3. So if I can produce a product for free and sell it for $3, that is $3 of profit for me. Now, this is going to be true for every single point on the curve. In fact, it's an infinite number of points. But if I were to say $1, that would mean that $3 minus $1 is 2. If my costs are $2, 3 minus 2 is 1. So 3 plus 2 plus 1, I can actually figure out how much of each of these is. So I'm going to do this in red. So. I'm going to say this is $3, and this is 2, and this is 1, and I can fill it in all these different points. Up to this point, the last company to produce has a cost of 3 and revenue of 3, and so the profit that's left over is 0. So I can have every single point filled in until I get this entire triangle. And if you remember that formula for a triangle, it's 1 half base times height. This is 1 half times 3, and times another 3, this is going to be $4.50 because it's 1 half of 9. And so the base is 3, the height is 3, and the triangle itself is 9. So this is a measure of profit or revenue minus cost. One price in the marketplace with rising costs gives you a, a shrinking gap. If you add up every single line in this gap, you get a triangle that follows this formula. And now consumer surplus is kind of like profit too, but it's a little bit more psychological. This is in a customer's mind. If you're willing to spend more than you actually pay, that is your consumer surplus. It's kind of a measure of utility, or it's like a falling benefit curve. So here you've got a person that's willing to pay $6, but only pays 3 That $3 makes them happy, and it makes them $3 worth of happy. So again, this is a dollar value for both. So you can measure, just like you measure business profits in dollars, you can measure this utility in dollars. If my willingness is 5 I save $2. If my willingness to pay is $4, I save $1, till finally I, I'm exactly willing to pay $3, and I pay 3 and I have no extra surplus, but I'm still happy to buy the product. I can do this for every dollar value in between. I can do it for $0.01 cent or $1.001, cent, all the way down, and I get this value as well. So this whole triangle is the entire buying group of consumers happiness due to buying the product. So one half BH as well is one half three times three. And then you can actually say that this too is $4.50. So this is 
$4.50 for consumers, $4.50 for producers, and then the entire world is $9. Is $9. So this is the free marketplace. And you can see here that if you change this, you're going to get different amounts accruing to both. So in the marketplace, consumer surplus is the triangle above equilibrium price, follows the triangle formula. And the pro uh, producer surplus is profit, is the triangle below the market price. And it's in between these axes here. Now, what if we were to introduce some sort of a price? I'm going to introduce a price ceiling of $1. Now, if you know price ceilings, you know that consumers like them because it's a lower price than market price. Producers don't like them because they're not allowed to sell for as high of a price. They're actually going to lose money. Right? So we can figure out that a price of one, this quantity is one. You could put in five here, but nobody buys these products. This shortage doesn't give anybody any happiness, and so it actually doesn't give anybody welfare. But what we're missing here is this point here. Now, if you take a quantity of one and put it in here, Price has to be 5. So 1 equals 6 minus 5. So what this means is that we're going to carve up this triangle, and we're going to, we're going to give it to different groups, and we're actually going to see some of it disappear because inter interfering in the marketplace means that welfare goes down overall. So the important thing to note is that the quantity drops from 3 to 1. So what that means is that if you give producers a lower selling price, they can't actually stay in business. Some businesses that have costs higher than a dollar will lose money if their price is now a dollar. Revenue minus cost would be negative. Costs are two, price is one, revenue is negative one. That business goes out of business. Everybody goes out of business from here to here. The only remaining producers are up here, and the only producer surplus is this triangle here. And this is one half base times height. All right, so whereas consumer surplus was 450 and producer surplus was 450, here producer surplus is zero and 50 cents. So this is only 50 cents. All right, now we'll do consumer surplus third. What I want to talk about next is what about the two items that weren't bought? Remember, purchases go down. There might be greater demand for the product, but they never get bought or sold. And so if you think about the lost profit for an unsold pr product, remember the two unsold products, that's a cut in profit. If you look at the lost utility from an unbought product, that is lost utility as well. So lost profit and lost utility, lost producer surplus, lost consumer surplus. The drop in quantity from three to two means a loss of buying and selling, a loss of mutually beneficial transactions that disappear. Right? This is actually lost to the marketplace because the products were never bought or sold. That is dead weight loss. Now if you look here, you can say, well, one half base times height, five minus one, that's the height, so four, and then this from here to here is two. This is going to be four dollars worth of dead weight loss. All right? So this is gone to everyone. Now, the only thing that's left is the consumer surplus. Now, consumers might be happy because of this low price, and we can actually put a dollar value on it. That's the point. Is that you can say, common sense tells you consumers like low prices. This can tell you how much. It can actually tell you if they're happier because of the price change overall. So we're going to cut this up into two parts. We've got this little triangle, which is 1 half times 1 times 1, or 50 cents. And then we've got this triangle here. This has a height of 4 and it has a base of one. So this is a triangle plus a rectangle. And so it looks like, kind of like a pencil, all right? Four, all right, so now it is 450. All right, so this is, I'm gonna do both parts, 0 0.50 for the tri triangle plus $4 for the rectangle equals 450, all right? Now if you look here, we cut up this, the two triangles, the red and the blue triangle, into different parts. They still add up to $9. But what's different is this black deadweight loss. This deadweight loss is lost to everyone. Now, consumer surplus went up. Um, actually, it's, it's about the same. It, 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 it could go up, it could go down. In this case, it exactly canceled out. Producer definitely went down. All right. So you think that consumers would be a little happy because they would see this lower price, but they're actually finding that it's a, a balancing act. 
they lost two per opportunities to buy the product, and that's exactly canceled out by the fact that the one that they did buy made them a little bit happier. All right, so, so let's look this over. Consumer surplus changes price or change changes utility. Producers definitely lose. They lose four dollars worth of happiness. Some of it goes from here to here. This is a transfer from from producers to consumers. That this actually represents money being handed over from producer profit to consumer utility. Anytime this product is two dollars cheaper, this is two dollars less profit for the producer, but it's two dollars more happiness for the consumer who finds that that lower price makes them happy. So this is a transfer. This bottom rectangle here is a transfer from producers to consumers. All right. So this is this is original producer surplus, and it remains original uh, remains producer surplus. But producer surplus or profit is so shrunk because of this policy, because of all all the the money they're losing by having a huge price cut and a loss in sales. Consumers keep this triangle, and they keep this rectangle, but they gain this rectangle here. That's the transfer. Now the new thing is the deadweight loss, which again goes nowhere. This is the lost profit from two lost sales. So it's neither bought nor sold, nobody gets it. And this is the lost utility from two more purchases. So the loss of sales here is so huge that it winds up taking a large chunk out of producer surplus and exactly equaling out consumer surplus. Now the point of this is that what you think might be common sense, consumers like low prices. In this case, isn't exactly true. Here it's a tie. And you could draw different triangles that actually make the new consumer surplus less than the original. Right, but consumers are not actually better off from this lower price. Common sense might tell you that they would like low prices, but the economic calculation shows you that it's exact. It's a, it's a wash. It exactly cancels out. And if you were to add in the fact that the market is producers and consumers, consumers are the same. Producers are clearly hurt. This this policy of this price ceiling is actually a bad idea economically for the marketplace. You can measure that loss with deadweight loss. So. So to recap, this $4 represents a loss of welfare to the entire world or the entire marketplace. So we've used this equation to put some numbers on all the points we need. We're going to use, we use geometry to show how to measure consumer well-being or consumer surplus, producer well-being or producer surplus, and then inefficiency or losses due to price distortions called deadweight loss. Using triangles as well as rectangles, we can put dollar values on all these numbers and we can show the effects of a policy. We can show welfare under equilibrium, welfare under distortion, and we can actually compare both policies.